My eyes are always on the Lord, <clears throat> for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're very welcome to our celebration of Mass this evening. Those here in church, those joining from home, you're all very welcome. It's the third Sunday of Lent. We continue this Lenten journey of repentance and conversion, praying for change of life as we turn to God with all our hearts and working to reflect more fully the love of God in our daily living. Let's begin the Mass in the spirit of repentance, recognizing our need of God's grace and God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us with the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth, beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord of God, am, jealous, am a jealous God, and I punish the father's fault in the sons, the grandsons, and the great-grandsons of those who hate me. But I show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not utter the name of the Lord, your God, to misuse it. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath for the Lord, your God. You shall do no work that day. Neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servants, men, or women, nor your animals, nor the stranger who lives with you. For the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that these hold. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. Honor your father and mother so that they may have a long life in the land 
that the Lord your God has given to you. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his servant, man, or woman, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. While the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching a crucified Christ. To the Jews, an obstacle they cannot get over. To the pagans, madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise you, O Christ, praise you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise you, O Christ, praise you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord. 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeon sellers, Take all this out of here, and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, What sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, Destroy this sanctuary, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build a sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when, the, and when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome once again to our Mass this evening. We celebrate this Vigil Mass of the third Sunday of Lent. Lent is a time of repentance, a time of turning back to God. Lent is a time of conversion, a time for change of life and behavior. Lent is a time of opportunity for spiritual growth. We are now approaching the halfway point in Lent, just three weeks to Holy Week and four weeks to Easter. The Gospel story is known as the cleansing of the temple. Jesus makes a whip out of some cord and drives the money changers out. Keep in mind that animals were necessary for sacrifice in the temple. Money changers were also necessary in the temple as people came from across the known world at the time with various forms of currency. It was just that this commercial activity was taking place in the temple itself, this place of worship of God, and so the worship was being disrupted. The cleansing of the temple attracts our attention, but don't overlook the words, destroy this sanctuary, and in three days... I will raise it up. Here Jesus was pointing to his own body, to his resurrection. We are the privileged members of the body of Christ. The Spirit of God dwells with us and within us. This is a great joy and privilege to be part of the body of Christ, but also a grave responsibility. We are to be as Christ to the world. Our lives are to be recognizable as Christian, not just in name, but in the manner of our living and behavior, in our firm faith and belief in the power of God. Lent is a time to make a review of our Christian life and identity. The first reading this Sunday that we have heard gives us the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> 
These commandments are divine positive law for Catholics. Human beings are to obey the commandments and live their lives by the commandments if they are to have eternal life. We would do well to do a review of life using the commandments and to avail of the sacrament of confession in Lent. The first of the three Ten Commandments are centered on God, the remaining seven on our interactions with other people. The first commandment tells us to have no God but the Lord our God. We are to love God before anyone or anything. When we love God first, every person, every material thing find their proper place. We love people for the sake of God who created us. We are to love God before power, honor, possessions, family, country. The second commandment tells us that we are not to take the name of God in vain. The third tells us to keep holy the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is a day of rest, a day given to God, for Christians, it's the Lord's day of resurrection. We are obliged to worship God, not only as a duty, but out of love of God. The fourth commandment, obliging us to honor our parents. The fifth, sixth, and seventh commandments tell us not to kill, not to commit adultery, not to steal. <clears throat> we are to be pro God's gift of life, to be faithful and to respect the property of others. The Eighth Commandment, forbidding us to bear false witness against our neighbor. We can see the commandments are highly relevant to the modern world. We are not to defame the good name of another. Think of media and social media, but most importantly, imply these commandments to our own lives. The final two tell us that we are not to covet our neighbor's spouse, our belongings. There is a human tendency to crave, crave what belongs to someone else, to have what someone else has. So Lent is a time to ask, how are we measuring up in terms of Christian life and living? Lent is a great time to do a serious re review, and the Ten Commandments and the Word of God this Sunday provide us with unambiguous clarity as to what God asks of us. Take some time to do the examination of conscience and go to confession. We can be sure of God's mercy when we turn to him in sorrow. Shall we stand? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord with our prayers asking for all we need to be faithful to the work of conversion, repenting of all that takes us away from God. For the whole church, that all who follow Christ may be a source of encouragement and strength for those seeking conversion of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation, that they may be fully open to God's grace and love. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. For governments and legislators, that they may work to establish and protect the sanctity of every human life in this time of pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, for children and young people as they return to school this week, and for teaching staff and parents. Lord, in your mercy, for all who are sick or suffering, lonely or bereaved, that the Lord will bring healing to the sick, comfort to the dying, conversion to sinners, and light to those experiencing darkness. Lord, in your mercy, for all who have died, that they may have eternal rest. Lord, in your mercy, we unite our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause to pray for our own intention. Our Mass this evening is offered for the repose of the soul of Anna Rosario. Our prayers are also requested for the Taplin family, some of whom are ill at this time and in need of our prayer. Also, we pray for the repose of the soul of Anthony Joseph. God, our Father, in fasting, charity, and prayer, you have shown us a remedy for sin, Listen in love to our prayers and lift up our hearts with the assurance of your mercy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time, 
for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Philip our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her young. <clears throat> By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, 
that abiding in, in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. The body of Christ 